Hi, this video is for sixth grade for Tuesday, May 12th. We're in another story. This is going to take us two days to read. So our story is called To the Top of Mount Everest. It's found in this book. Um, like I said, um, this story is a little bit longer, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is we'll just read the first half and then I'll read the second half for Thursday's lesson. So first of all, this story is in a journal or a diary format. So we're learning about this woman that climbed Mount Everest, which is the tallest uh, mountain in the world. It's actually her right here. She's our author. And she diaries and journals each day the things that happened. And then we're going to read about it today. So we'll read the first half now and the second half for Thursday's lessons. Let me go in. Okay. Friday, March 30th, 2007. Here we go. Kathmandu. Today is the day our bags are nearly packed and we're just about ready to go. I've got 11 hours to run around doing last minute errands before our plane takes off. I arrived back in Long Beach from New York last Saturday, where I've been since our return from Cho Oyu. When I wasn't training by running, this is going to be one of your questions in your Google Docs. What is some of the things she did training? When I wasn't training by running, swimming at the pool, taking dance classes or rock climbing, I was taking oboe lessons, which is a musical instrument, French and photography classes. Hopefully I'll be able to take some great pictures on this expedition. It has been a very exciting week in all of our general trip preparation mayhem, filled with lots of gear sorting and FedEx packages arrivals. But now my dad and I are pretty much all set to go. See you in Kathmandu. So she's going with her dad on this trip to climb the largest mountain, tallest mountain in the world. Her next diary is Monday, April 2nd, 2007, Kathmandu. After nearly 24 hours of travel, we finally arrived in Kathmandu yesterday afternoon. Doug, who's my dad, and I met up with the rest of the team, which was Victor, James, and Wim, at our hotel in Kathmandu. We had a group meeting where we went over the route we are, we are going to take to base camp, and then we picked up some odds and ends at one of the dozens of local climbing stores. The team is flying to Lukla to begin the trek to base camp early tomorrow morning. So remember, you can see here... Where, so she wrote this on Monday, and then she's writing again in her journal on Wednesday. Let's see what she has to say. Yesterday, after a very scenic flight and a heart-stopping landing on a small airstrip perched on the side of a mountain, we arrived in Lukla to begin the trek to base camp. Lukla was filled with excitement as porters organized their loads and trekkers began their journeys. From Lukla, we hiked for about four hours through the beautiful ne Nepalese it's in the country of Nepal, countryside, passing through several villages until we reached the village of Monjo, where we stayed the night in the Monjo guest house. I think my dad and I got the big sleep that we needed to catch up on our jet lag. Around four in the afternoon, we decided to take a nap that lasts until seven the next morning. So she takes, well, there's a big jump here from Wednesday, April 4th to Thursday. So she goes eight days in between journaling. Let's see what happened. So we're right here, paragraph eight. We made it to base camp yesterday afternoon. Today we are going to practice crossing the ladders over the Kumba ice fall. We're going, we are well and safe. This is one of your questions in the Google Doc. What were they practicing doing? The answer is right here where my finger is. Paragraph nine. In route here, we arrived Lama Giza and he blessed our journey. It was an amazing experience. I'm going to try and connect my laptop and charge it with my solar charger. We will see if that works. More to follow. So she writes this, she says, here we go. And then four days later, she journals again. Let's see what happens. Yesterday, we got an early start for our first time through the ice fall. We went around 6.30 in the morning with the idea that we would turn around 11. We did not necessarily have a destination in mind. It was more of an accl acclimatization and to get an idea of what the ice fall was like. However, at 11, we were about half an hour from the top of the ice fall, so we decided to just continue to the top. It was quite fun climbing up the ice fall. The ladders that we had to cross over 
crevices were especially exciting. I was pretty tired by the time we got back to the base camp, but today was a rest day, our first, so I've had plenty of time to recover. Tomorrow, we're going up to the camp to spend the night. Camp one is about an hour further than we went yesterday. The next day, we'll, we'll go up tag camp two, go up to tag camp two, and then come back down to base camp. So she wrote this on a Monday, and then she writes again on Thursday. So let's see what happens on Thursday. The day before yesterday, we all made it up to the camp one to spend the night. This time, we were able to go through the Kumba ice fall an hour quicker than the last. We had a pretty good night at camp one, and my dad and I both had a bit of a headache at first, but we were both able to eat and sleep well. Camp one is at the start of the Western Chum. Yesterday from camp one, we continued up the Chum to camp two. The Chum is an infamous for being very uncomfortably hot, but yesterday was actually really nice. It was very beautiful and we could see the summit of Everest. That means the very top. Move the camera a little bit here. Which we haven't been able to see since before we got to base camp. After we tagged camp two, we came all the way back down to the base camp. It was a long day and we all returned pretty tired. However, it was it was nice to be back in the base camp and after dinner, we watched the movie Mission Impossible 3 on Ben's laptop from the London Business School team. Unfortunately, the power ran out about halfway through it, but I've been asked to charge up my laptop so we can finish tonight. Today was the puja, which is a ceremony that the Sherpas organize. A Lama comes up and performs many chants to ask the mountain gods for permission to climb the mountain and to ask for protection. I had my ice ax and my crampons blessed in the ceremony. As part of the ceremony, they also put a long lines of prayer flags coming out from the stupa where the ceremony was performed. Afterwards, they passed out lots of yummy treats. So since the story is really long, this will be the last page that we will be reading today. And as you can see, that's a picture of our real author really climbing Mount Everest. While we were at the camp one, the shower tent was set up here in the base camp. This is also one of the questions in your Google Docs, so pay attention here. It's just a little bucket of water with a hose attached to it, but it definitely felt like 15 minutes of heaven. So this will be the last thing that we read today. So Saturday, base camp. We are back at the base camp. We came down from the top of two yesterday and arrived just in time for lunch. We were delayed a bit in the morning because we were radioed from the base camp that there was a break in the ice fall and we didn't want to leave until we knew that the ice doctors had fixed up the route. As we came down, we found that the break was in a flat area known as the football field that we had privately designated as a safe area to take a little rest. And the whole shelf just collapsed. This will be the last two paragraphs that we read. Now that we have spent the night at Camp 3, we are done with the acclimation process. We're going to take a few days now to rest and recover, and then we just wait for good weather to make a summit bid. We plan to go back down to the Pangobochi tomorrow so we can really get a good rest at lower altitude before our summit attempt. Here's what we have been up to the last few days. So once again, if you're having trouble focusing, our author here with her dad, they're, they're up in the high elevation in uh, Nepal. And what they do is before you actually try to climb the mountain, you do a couple practice climbs, you know, to make sure because at high altitudes to make sure you don't pass out and to make sure that you have enough food and that you're strong enough to do it. So on Thursday's reading, we're going to finish the story. And she hasn't started climbing the mountain yet, but she will soon. So see you next time.